I'm Dr. Emmanuel Mokoye, and you're welcome to another episode of Consumption to Production Niger. Yes, I know what you're wondering. I've been out for so long. I want to first thank every single person that reached out to me in one way or the other to ask about my well being. Thank you. I'm fine. I had to take a break, but I'm back now. Let's get back to today's topic. Today, we'll be talking about how you can produce vegetable oil from palm kind of oil. Let's take a look. And the required raw material is palm kernel oil. Vegetable oil or refined palm kernel oil, as you may know it, is used for cooking. It has some industrial application. There is a huge opportunity in the production of vegetable oil in Nigeria. Let's examine the facts. Thanks. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, in 2022, Nigeria imported 640,000 metric tons of vegetable oil. Also, according to the United States Department of Agriculture, between 2023 and 2024, Nigeria produced about 459,000 metric tons of palm kernel oil, making Nigeria the fifth largest producer of palm kernel oil in the world. The job opportunity in this industry is estimated at about 5 million jobs, both direct and indirect. Now, the states where you can find the raw material required are Cross River State, Kwaibom State, River State, Abia State, Imo State, Bayasa State, Delta State. Nambra State, Bonyu State, Enugu State, Edo State, Kogi State, Ondo State, Ukiti State, Oshun State, Oyo State, and Ogun State. Let's talk about the project information. The factory size is estimated at 610 square meters. The land space required is 100 by 400. Output capacity is 3 tons per day. And the working time is 12 hours. The total power required is estimated to be about 250 kilowatts. Classification is a medium scale factory. The number of workers required is 10 people per shift. And the regulators, if branding, are NAFDAQ and Sun. Let's talk about the equipment required. We can't talk about the equipment without understanding the process. And there are eight steps required to make edible oil from palm kernel oil. The first is the pretreatment. The second is the degumming. The third is the neutralization. The fourth is the washing. The fifth is the bleaching. The sixth is filtration. The seventh deodorization, and lastly, cooling and storage. Now, here are the equipments required for each of the process. There are 10 people per shift required to make this work. Now, here's what it's going to look like. I know what you're thinking. Trust me, it's not as complicated as it looks. I'll help you make sense out of this. Let's break it down. Now, the very first process you need to do here is filtration process. This basically means making the oil a bit cleaner than what it was when it was delivered. The input is three tons of crude palm kernel oil containing solids and gums. Uh, and the equipment required here is the feed pump and filter press. The output will be the filtered oil. Now, the process involves uh, the filtration of oil to remove solid impurities and sediments from the crude oil. 
Now, the next process is the degumming process. In this process, hot water is added to hydrate and remove phosphatides and gums that can cause the oil to cloud. The inputs here are the filtered oil and food grade phosphoric acid, 0.1 to 0.2%. Equipment required is the reaction tank, agitated, meaning basically uh, an electric motor turning or rather mixing the oil. And output is the degummed oil free of uh, precipitates. The next process is the neutralization process. The process involves adding caustic soda to react with and remove free fatty acid from the oil, which causes uh, rancidity in the oil. The input here is the degummed oil gotten from the previous process and uh, the caustic soda solution. Something I have to mention here is that the crude oil has to be tested for FFA, meaning free fatty acid. And the value of the FFA in the crude oil will determine the amount of caustic soda to be added in this process. Now, I will talk about this process in a different video. I'm talking about the uh, testing of the oil for FFA and the eventual removal of, uh, or rather the addition of uh, caustic soda to remove FFA in the oil. Now, I'll do that in a different video, but the equipment that is required for this process uh, is the neutralization vessel agitated. Uh, the output will be the neutralized oil and soap stock separated. Something to note here is that this soap stock can be converted back to oil that can be used to make soap. Soap manufacturers love this. Uh, they like to use this to make soap and it's very good for soap making. Now, we'll talk about how this is done in a different video and how eventually you can make soap out of it. The next process is the washing process. In this process, the oil is washed with hot water to remove any remaining soap stock from the neutralization process. And this is done several times until the oil is free of soap stock. The input is neutralized oil and uh, hot water, uh, basically about 10 to 20% in volume. The equipment required is the washing tank, agitated obviously. Output will be washed oil, reduced of soap content. The next process is the bleaching process. In this process, activated clay is mixed with the oil to help absorb pigments, oxidate, churn products and uh, trace metals. The input here is the washed oil and bleaching earth, about 0.5 to 1.5%. Uh, the bleaching earth is also known as uh, bleaching clay. Now, there is a research my team and I are conducting in Nigeria as we speak to see how bleaching clay can be made in Nigeria using something the Igbos call nzu or kaolin in English. Now, please, uh, do not use Unzu. I repeat, do not use Unzu. This whole thing is still in uh, research, and it has to go through several processes with something like activated carbon. Um, and this research is still ongoing. And it has to go through laboratory testing, uh, and as well as it has to be approved by NAPDAC. Uh, more to come on that. The equipment required for this is the bleaching vessel, agitated, jacketed, under vacuum. And the output will be your bleached oil, reduce color and uh, pigments. The next process is the filtration process. Uh, the spent bleaching earth is filtered out, uh, leaving a clear free deodorized oil. And the input here is your bleached oil and spent earth slurry. The equipment is the leaf filter. The output is clear, bleached oil and spent K. Now, the next is the deodorization. This is the heart of everything we're doing here. This process, steam distillation is done under high heat and vacuum to remove volatile odor and uh, taste compounds. Input is your bleached oil and steam. The equipment required is the deodorizer under vacuum. 
and the output is your refined, bleached, and deodorized palm kernel oil. Neutral order and taste. The last process is the cooling and packaging. This process involves the refined oil being cooled under controlled condition. And the input is your refined, bleached, deodorized oil. The equipment required for this process is the cooling system, which in most cases, uh, it's built inside the deodorizer. And the output is your final product ready for packaging. Now let's take a look at what this looks like when put together. You can get the required equipment by importing or made in Nigeria. I happen to be one of the first to build a 100% locally designed and made in Nigeria vegetable oil refinery. And it's located in the Buzo Delta State. You can go check it out. Now, you know me. I will always advocate for locally made equipment. And I can help you fabricate all the required equipment for the refinery. I have a team of engineers in Nigeria, and this is what they do. This is how they make a living, and they are very, very good at it. You can contact me on WhatsApp on plus one eight six zero three nine four zero nine eight two. That's the number shown on your screen. Again, it's plus one eight six zero. Three nine four zero nine eight two. Let me know in the comment section if you like more information and if there is any factory you would like me to talk about on the next video. I am eager to hear what you have to say on the comment section. Now, above all, remember, the word impossible is a fool's comfort zone, but with God, all things are possible. Start small. Grow big, stay consistent, and remain productive. Until next time, I remain your optimistic friend, Dr. Emmanuel Mokunye, aka Dr. Industrial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you on the next one.